What is up? Fellas, JPS Livers here, NCAA 08 <clears throat> Dynasty. I know we had the intro video. Might as well get week one underway. John David Bowie, Booty and the number one ranked USC Trojans get a nice win right there. Number two, Michigan also find themselves the win already, and it happens to be a win against Appalachian State. If you remember, talked about it with BJ Simmons and company in the campus legend. This is technically the year with Chad Henney and Mike Hart and Mario Manningham and that offense. They end up not scoring enough points in real life to beat uh, Appalachian State and ends up becoming one of the biggest upsets of all time. There we are, number 24 in the country. Right before, one spot before, no, quarterback number 12, Mr. Matt Ryan and the Boston College Eagles. But right here, taking a look at basically what is going to be the preseason Heisman award or at least what they're gonna have right now is the favorite darren mcfadden out of arkansas him and felix jones one of the best tandems i'd have to say talent wise in college history with running backs um, i know you talk about uh, what i mean I, I, i'm not gonna get into it i'm a little spacey right now but uh you got mr kyle Fromm, i believe that's his name um, sounds like brahms the fucking uh, midwest Ice cream, a uh, Midwest type of like Dairy Queen, uh, specifically for like the North and Miss Midwest. Got Colt Brennan, um, as well as, of course, John David Booty. And then Steve Slayton is going to finish it out. One of the best uh, just skill players in general, especially one of the best running backs now looking at the conference outlook. Big 12 back then. Got the number 24 team in the country. Texas Tech is not far behind. I'm pretty sure they were ranked. I think if you look at preseason polls, you can go all the way down. I should have checked. Who we should have? I should have checked who was dead last. Who would be dead last ranked to start the year at FBS football? The number one in the country. Trojans looking like they're going to be easily the number one team to beat. But now we looked at the recruits we had, and uh, right away we're just looking at two dudes on defense. Uh, Strong safety. And then a D tackle with Voger Powell. Vogel Powell. I mean, what a name. Max Vogel Powell out of Arlington, Texas. That is a cool name, though. William Perkett. That D tackle. We got another Vogel Powell. So two M Vogel Pals. This time, Kingwood, Texas, which is just outside of Houston, Texas. D tackle right away. It just, I mean, Parquet is right there, William Parquet. He has already got AM as a number one team. That's a cool ass name. We got Richardson at D tackle. One of the better D tackles, I think, in the country. I'm pretty sure, if I'm correct. But the names itself, I mean, if we can get both Mike and Max Vogel Pal, there's, I mean, yeah, right away. I'm also drinking coffee during this. Noticing. Those amazing names. I mean, that's what you need to aim for. I know you could create players with um, what NCAA 14 and I think NCAA 13 too. But uh, you could basically create recruits. But in this one, you technically can't. So at this point, we're going to try our best to uh, take advantage of these cool-ass names and get these players on the... we got to get the Vogel, Vogel Pal Twins going. And I'm looking forward to it because also, too, <clears throat> this is solid defense. But that we're going to have to need to get some recruits for this defense because this man's going to be gone soon. Free safety number 26. It's going to be the first turnover on the young day, Montana State. They got the three and out against our offense. But we're going to be in amazing field position. Great, great, great move. Great, great read. Great jump. It's going to turn into a highlight play as a great play. For Mr. Free Safety, number 26. And then, throwing it out right there, play action. We're going to use it play action quite a bit with Steve McGee. Pass out to wide receiver number 8 is going to be 4th down. But however, though, on 4th and 1. What's going to go down? It's going to be a turnover. turnover Left in number 93. No sacks by him. No sacks by this whole team so far. But two tackles. And two tackles for loss. But it's going to be picked off. Beautiful field position again. Going to play, well, I mean, Montana State, I believe at this point, is an FCS team. Uh, also, too, I'll put a link to the channel in the description. <clears throat> Fellas, if you've not 
come across his channel already. Mr. Jeffrey plays on NCAA 06 with Montana State Bobcats to build up them. It's actually a sick-ass series. He's been doing a shit ton of videos. This dude is way more consistent than myself in doing this stuff. His quality of his content is way better than mine. Um, I just gotta admit that it's some badass shit. Y'all should check it out on NCAA 2006. I know I'm not able to pump that shit out because that's why we're doing this to begin with is uh, just for some reason it's not doing that for NCAA 06 with this A&M team, but Montana State Bobcats, um, just like he did with the Vipers, Albuquerque Vipers, on Madden 07, I believe. Um, the dude's getting a lot of hype lately. Uh, I like his shit, so <clears throat> I'm going to put a link in the description. But unfortunately, I'm sorry to do it to you, Jeffrey. Your boys, they're, uh, they're just not playing a good game offensively. I know we had that big highlight right there, but it's going to be a sack from who I believe is D... Nope, it's going to be... D tackle number 95. So I know 85 started the season off as uh, team captain. We selected him as team captain. He's probably the best rated player on this defense, even though I'd have to say the best performing player on this defense has been left outside linebacker number 37, who is technically the middle starting middle linebacker on this team. I should have thrown it to wide receiver number 9 on that one. But however it is what it is, throwing it out, to Mr. Mike Goodson, who is proving to already be utilized all over the field. Not only as running back, obviously, but to be a pass-catching back. And he's a kickoff returner and punt returner, but drop pass right there. It's my jinx on that one. Miss catch, but he's going to go down the field. Nice move. Well, not nice enough to break the tackle, but nearly a first down. What's the pass play going to be right here? To watch a coup with the catch. And it's nicely done with the first down. Just under three minutes left here in the quarter. Nice catch by wide receiver number nine. Then the J train's going to get it in for his first rushing touchdown of the season, as you can see right there. Michigan ends up ball stomping Appalachian State 48 to number three. No contest whatsoever. Was not even a scare, as many thought it would be before it became an upset. 14 to zip now here for Texas A&M. Nice catch by wide receiver number 27. But third and 10, what's going to go down on this one? It's going to be a nice batted ball by cornerback number 43, and it's going to be fourth down. And then turnover by the Bobcats. Now it's, now it's officially on just under three minutes left in this one. And a beautiful catch by Martellus Bennett on the outside. We improved his speed. In boot camp now it is an 85 speed so now they're dealing with a six foot seven tight end who's a pretty good pa uh, run blocker and definitely one of the better tight ends in all the country and he's just a sophomore i mean we're trying to turn this dude into some notre dame tight end shit and uh i mean he obviously had a good career texas a m speaking of good is just the playmaking ability by mike goodson beautiful play on the outside then the pass I mean, you got to catch that. Wide receiver number eight, you got to catch that. Uh, I know the number's a little messed up because, well, maybe they're not because Jeff Fuller ends up becoming wide receiver number eight. Um, Jeff Fuller, like I said, with Brian Swope, with the likes of Draw Johnson, and then, of course, famously, with Ryan Tannehill and that offense. It was sick. It was sick. They lost to LSU in that um, Cotton Bowl game, but yeah, that A&M team, that was a fun team. That was a fun team, especially considering, I mean, think how good of an athlete Ryan Tannehill is. The dude was a star wide receiver for Texas A&M and Draw Johnson before he took over Draw Johnson's job. So, beautiful sack on the play. 21 to zip. Right before this sack right here by cornerback number 18. Just under 40 seconds to go in the first half. Quarterback number 14, get it back. Back it up. And, uh, well, he wish he was going forward, though. Drop pass. Wide receiver number 7 is 27. So, right here. This dude just goes forever. Just fucking pissed as shit. Does this make any sense to you? I mean, if the dude's going to be sitting there pissed off, he's like, oh, no, 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 dude, that's on me. No, dude. The guy, he's like, you just freaked out for five seconds. Don't try to play some cool ass fucking my bad shit. You fucking freaked out for 10 seconds. You shouldn't, no. You can't get away with that. You freaked out like a little fucking kid. 
You can't say the whole like, oh yeah, dude, my bad, I'm on national television, I'm cool as fuck, dude. okay, oh, I just fucking bat my chest and shit, playing fucking LeBron James after getting a, a sick ass highlight. No, you can't be doing that shit, you can't get away with that shit. Even though, I thought Martellus Bennett was gonna get away with this, but, four seconds left, the clock was running with seven seconds left, I thought he was out of bounds, but we call a timeout as the clock ran off about three seconds, decide not to kick the... Field goal in that one, even though we do have one of the better kickers in all the country. And if you saw on the bottom, I think it was Mr. Hill with Wisconsin halfback number 39 had four touchdowns on the on the day um, or on the game, whatever the fuck you want to say. However the fuck you want to say it, um, 150 plus yards. Sick game by him. And speaking of six game, sick games. This defense is getting things done. This is a solid defense. I mean, we worked on Michael Bennett, which that's a weird thing. I mean, when you think about it, it's like one of the better DNs in all of the NFL for a good while was the likes of Michael Bennett. And right there, a fucking fumble. The man was getting things done all over the field. I decided to challenge this shit. Um, you know, fuck it. Up by four touchdowns. And almost immediately is one of those where you're like, yep, I fucked up. It's not a good challenge whatsoever. He obviously fumbled that shit. And it's going to be Bobcat Ball here with just over five minutes left in the... Well, I mean, technically, if you want to say it's like basically 12 or 13 minutes left in the fucking third quarter. The way we have it for six-minute quarters. But it's going to be a fumble on the play, and it is a legitimate fumble that is recovered by Montana State as they're going to get first and 10 now at their own. And what a move by wide receiver number 19, getting things done against right outside linebacker number 28, who has like 88 speed, I'm pretty sure. And the dude's athletic, and he just juked the shit out of me. Weren't able to get much done with their running back himself, but the wide receiver ends up getting things done on the ground. Going to be a blocked extra point. What's an NCAA 08 game without having a blocked extra point? I was pissed off that they finally scored, and it was nice. So right there, a sack on the day by cornerback number 18, as well as being able to get a blocked field goal as well. But this is, I play this, it's not a touchdown. Fucking, uh, I mean, I guess the kicker did a good job of setting his guy up for uh, pushing into me, his own fucking blocker pushing into him, causing him not to be able to score a touchdown. But I thought it was a cool angle right there. Um, I know it's technically the same angle anyways as you would for touchdowns, but I thought it was just the angle itself running right down the middle of the field, but roughing the passer on the play after what seemed to be a successful play anyways, but speaking of successful plays on the outside, Mike Goodson getting it done. Touchdown for the man, West Virginia 48-17 to against, I believe, Western Kentucky University, not able to stop that triple option attack, as well as Pat White through the air. Is Western, well, West Virginia University is going to get the win right here as this A&M team is still pretty much in the driver's seat. I was trying to go for the pick, but 35-6, to six, triple option, beautiful pitch on the outside. Will only get about six or seven yards. Nope, only five yards. And then just a complete pass. I thought it was about to be an incomplete pass, if I remember correctly, but I did not. Fortunately enough, it was a complete pass, but unfortunately, it's going to be a sack. Cornerback sack, I believe it was the nickelback that came in and sacked things, just like nickelback came in and took over Rolling Stones in the early 2000s. Beautiful sack on the play. Beautiful call by Montana State Bobcats head coach or de defensive coordinator. Still 35-6, to though, on fourth down. Nice first down conversion. Just under two minutes left in this one. But it's going to be another costly play. It's going to be a fumble. And we know for sure there's no need to count challenge on that one. It's going to go the other way. Stephen McGee on that one. Unfortunately, just a bad play. Maybe running the option one too many times. Not getting used to it or whatever. It's just, eh, it's whatever. But beautiful tip. But an even better play by free safety number 26. Make that to his second interception on the day this defense is rolling the offense has been running smoothly ever since having two straight possessions without points in the first quarter to start off the game free safety number 26 i mean pretty much putting himself 
in position to be a player of the game for sure. Maybe even on defense. But could be the player of the game for both sides of the ball overall. But J Train's having a good game, especially at this point, trying to just run off the clock. But another fumble. Another turnover. Forestly up by like 30 or so points. The defense is just everywhere against this Montana State def uh, offensive line. Eight tackles by the man. It was linebacker number 37. The guy I was talking about being the best player on this team, or at least the best performing player on this team. I'd have to say Mike Goodson's up there as well, even though Mike Goodson's not getting nearly the volume the J train is. But, I mean, I mean, when you got a guy like the J train, you can hurt the defense like that. You come in for the change of pace back, and that is Mike Goodson. And speaking of change of pace, no one's going to be able to catch up with his pace. Big, big return. It's going to be a second total touchdown on the day by Mike Goodson. Halfback screen. No, it's going to be a wide receiver screen. Not successful in that one. And then what's Steve McGee going to do on this play? He's going to throw it out to his man, Nawachiku. And Nawachiku, after the wide receiver quarterback direct, is going to take it to the house. Big play on that one. Not quite 60 yards, but it is four touchdown passes on the day by Mr. Stephen McGee and make it now a third touchdown by Mr. Mike Goodson at running back. The J train having a decent game himself. Beautiful cut to the outside by him. Wonderful broken tackle. I mean, the man is easily one of the stronger running backs in all of football. I mean, he could have easily been the strongest running back in all of football. And speaking of, he's going to bulldoze his way in. Almost unscathed, but he's definitely untackled as it's going to be an easy, easy walk-in for the man. Just easily one of the strongest. Has like 96 broken tackles. It's the J train this year. It's technically the season in which he broke the A&M record for most rushing touchdowns, and that one is going to be a fumble on the last play of the game. 63-6, to Texas A&M at home at the old Kyle Field here in 2007 at the start of the fall, just around there with September football, maybe even late August on this one. Texas A&M gets the win. Player of the game, Steve McGee at quarterback. 300-plus yards total and four total touchdowns on the day. Nice win with Fresno State up next. Later, fellas.